okay, what happened? You know, how did you lose? What did they do well? What did you do? What could we work on to make it better for next time? And you're taking away the growing part of it. And what's so right about that is a lot of parents will go, you were better. <laughs> I know yeah. you didn't, make, but you were better. Yes. You didn't make the team. You yes. didn't make, and no, don't Stop you're not it. better. You lost. We Just uh, deal with losing. <laughs> loser, loser. You don't have to yell that. <laughs> Let's not scream at the children. I mean, come on. You're a loser. <laughs> you're a loser. Now, one other kid in this neighborhood does chores. You're going to get in trouble, Murtaugh. Hey, Ma, can we get some meatloaf? He started it. Mom. Mom! What? Shut up! What is the matter with you? I know it's a school night, so we're just going to get right down to it. Well, good morning and welcome to Fearless Parenting with Harry H. Harrison Jr. We have a special, special guest, a uh, Dallas Cowboy or a retired Dallas Cowboy, Corey Proctor, who's bringing us some wisdom about sports and being a dad and that kind of thing. And we're going to be talking sports with Corey. Um, a lot of parents don't know where they stand, like on football or or when should my kids start playing sports or how many sports are too many? What about specialization? The whole thing. I mean, I've been through it as a dad and it was really expensive. And I think most parents, when they get into club, club sports, it can really run into some money. And uh, that's just a decision you have to make if that's something you want to do. But so Corey, welcome. Thank you. Um, we can only assume you're in favor of sports being a cowboy. I'm a bit biased. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, so listen, wh what do sports do for kids? Let's just take it real general and, and go down. Man, sports provides so many different uh, learning factors, curves for, for kids growing up. I, uh, to me, I was talking a little bit about it yesterday, and, and before this, you and I were speaking on it, was it, it provides a learning curve in an accelerated way, accelerated pat platform and path uh, for, for kids to kind of – use lessons that they get out of sports a whole lot quicker than others who don't and not to say you can't get it outside of sports by any stretch right but uh but we're dove we learn by so many different factors outside of us but we're plunged into adversity so quick in the sports that we learn to deal with that at a lot younger age so both my boys were very active uh uh in soccer um somewhat football but it was uh they they, they were on a, on a soccer club and uh it was as a parent i mean i watched them go through uh, making the team you know being excited uh being uh crushed on defeat being being triumphant when they when they won and there were so many emotions that they could experience that i think you know there's a lot of tendency today with parents to keep their kids away from feeling troubled from being hurt so you actually there's there's parents who say well uh i don't really want any competitive sports until they are like in high school or something because it's just too competitive my daughter will will faint like a starfish uh <laughs> starfish. starfish i've seen fainting starfishes it's not pretty <laughs> <laughs> it's let real me just, let me just stop you now <laughs> there's, there's a whole underlying that you don't know what's going on a whole backstory a whole a backstory. backstory so um uh what is your advice to parents? Like, when, when should a kid start organized sports? Should organize sports? I think as soon as you can get them in it. Obviously, we have some uh, protecting factors. Like, you can't get into football without – I think nowadays a lot of times they have them in the, in the flag football leagues. So there's they take pads out of the equation and, and the collisions as much as possible out of the equation. But you start getting them in the athletic scope or sphere of sports in general so they can start learning how to develop their body and, and feeling it out. There's so many – I've had it before. Guys, you know, started in high school, and they are so uncoordinated. It's crazy. Not to say everybody has the gift to move like any other athlete, but a lot of these guys or these athletes at that level become so well – they do so well in high school or move on because they started so early on. And they started crafting. Not in a, I'm going to dog you and get you better and better and better at your craft, but just get in, them in it early. You, you start speaking at an early age. Right, right away, we talk to our kids. We want to do that same kind of fashion. They need to get their bodies going. So there is some bit of controversy between, I mean, a lot of people feel, and I'm kind of in this camp, that there's so much emphasis now on structured sports that you just don't, kids just don't go out with the football and, and play at sandlot football or sandlot baseball or basketball. And unless there's some grown-up involved, they just don't do that anymore. Mm. And that, I, I think, is, a, is we're shortchanging the kids by – 
telling them, well, you have to have an adult here and you have to be in pads to, to, to play. And then most people, I mean, I started sports when, just with Sandlot, you know, just, just going out with my neighbor's kids and playing. And you probably did too. Yes. Uh, but, but I think the parents are, it's really funny. They're really protective on, on, at some end, like I'm not going to let my kid outdoors because uh, he could bump into a stranger um, to, okay, I'm going to put him in a football helmet and shoulder pads at four <laughs> and let him collide with another kid. Well, that speaks to a whole other issue. It's like yeah. we're in this digital age. We're on our phones constantly. So we've become so much so much more sedentary in all of our ways, right, which is, okay, at least all kind of obes- obesity issues and other, other related health issues from that. But we've gotten so sedentary in our ways that we don't ever get outside until there's something that calls to that, like a structured sport. Right. So – the really I like what you're trying to get as let's get back to the value of getting outside and, and experiencing nature and our bodies in a whole um, yeah, having, organic way right having fun with it yeah um, I think there is a, a tendency to take the fun out of youth sports and I mean parents are wackos yes. <laughs> they I mean they'll stand on the sideline at a four-year-old game and scream at a four-year-old who's I mean he's fascinated by the clouds <laughs> looking around well and along those lines like you said harry besides the fact that you didn't introduce me and yes i am on today's episode what's my name here oh i'm sorry either. i'm sorry no, the other special guest yeah. is Catherine. Dene- <laughs> <laughs> he Dene- can't, Dene- he can't Dene- none, Dene- now Happy you too Dene- nobody Dene- can get my name and, um, um the other, gonna express her opinion well you know what harry <laughs> you always know that's why i'm here but uh, one of the major things that you're talking about is like you said parents don't want to let their kids go outside and play by themselves because of the boogeyman and and that's true of of my world but then you put your kids in sports and you all of a sudden expect them to be these phenomenal athletes who are going to hit every goal and it's just not that way even Mm -hmm. if they're learning like Corey said and they're getting to know their bodies at five years old the soccer it's like a it's like a rugby scrum running around you know it's not actually individualized it's a bunch of little ants oh yeah it's hilarious i used to coach kids soccer uh like five years old and four and five years old and it was one memorable game we had a, a girl four years old five years, it's a goalkeeper and she was her parents had dressed her like the uh, michelin man i mean she was just all pads <laughs> and a helmet for soccer <laughs> well she right. was she was in the goal she was goalie and her father had a bullhorn and uh he would scream at her you know pay attention sarah lee pay attention and sarah was four and one game we had a a, a scrum of four-year-olds kicking kicking the ball and the ball kind of was rolling you know like it does and i looked over at sarah and she was staring away from the game at the net and so i went back you know and, and her father saw her and said sarah pay attention and meanwhile the ball started trickling closer and i looked back at sarah and she had her hands on the net <laughs> action behind her and then <laughs> here was this big scrum again and it was getting all wild and furious and it was coming closer to the net and i looked back at sarah and she was climbing the net. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. And then as the ball got right at the goal line, her father had a bullhorn. Sarah, pay attention. Sarah was trying fiercely to get out of the net. And then she just gave up. Hands and feet just hung on the net. And the ball kind of just trickled into the goal. That was priceless. That's awesome. Did you ever have any <laughs> of that, priceless. Corey? Any of the any crazy parents? I mean, not yours, but anybody around you when you were in child athletics? Oh, yeah. I mean, we had... You have the classic people who got mad at everything. Mm-hmm. They want to get involved in the coaching aspects and the decisions made there, which I think are hilarious. Now, I get the protective aspect of that. I yeah. get that. Nobody wants to see their kid cry, hurt, um, cheated out of a situation. You know, But the fact of the matter is if they don't learn how to handle themselves in that situation, they'll never do it outside of it. Mm-hmm. That's right. absolutely right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it, absolutely right. And it's funny because I was I was thinking about I don't have the saying quite right, but it's you teach what you know, but you create what you are, right? So when you're a kid and you have a kid that's afraid to jump in there or do anything, and you want to sit there and harass your kid all day long about what they're not doing right, right? You know, look at what you're doing. So if we're wanting our kid to be this awesome athlete, like hold on. Did, were you intentional about taking your kid outside to play sports before they got into that? Yeah. Right. And having fun with them right. in the sandlot? Yeah. I mean, so you got to ask yourself those kind of questions, too. It's like, I got to take that out of my time to be with my daughter, who's three years old and awesome, by the way. And she's, she's like built like me, basically. Self plug. <laughs> Self plug. <laughs> Self plug. <laughs> Shameless. Any coaches out there, there's yes. a three year old. <laughs> Daughter of Corey walking around. She's going to be an amazing athlete. <laughs> Division one. Well, I can already see it. 
but yeah, but we have to be in that. But you're exactly right. And the uh, so few parents. I mean, they work hard. They come home, and they're exhausted. And uh, uh, the kids may want to go play ball. May want to kick it or throw it or pass it. And dad's too tired and mom's too tired. And then they think, well, okay, the Y has a program. Mm -hmm. That'll be good. So I'll just put them in, in Y soccer or Y football or whatever. And my job's done. I'll just drive them there. Mm -hmm. And then they wonder, well, why is the kid not interested? Right. right. And it's uh, – uh, so I coached young kids for a long time. Not that I'm a coach. I'm just a dad <laughs> that, that – son didn't have a team, so <laughs> I wound up as a coach. Um, and so I witnessed, you know, parents losing their minds – one day, I was, it was some five-year-old, six-year-old game, and I, all the parents were just yelling and screaming. I was reading the newspaper, mm -hmm. and some guy looked at me and said, well, you're the coach. Why aren't you yelling? I went, really? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not going to happen, Jack. <laughs> and I'm not even sure your kid's ready for this team. <laughs> and uh, uh, so and I watched parents just lose their minds as, as the games got more and more you know, meaningful and, and the kids got older. Um, but I think that what Corey was saying is really important. If you want your child to be an athlete, if you're harboring dreams of them being an athlete, um, you need to go play with them first. Mm -hmm. and you need to find out what they're good at. And, and uh, at three or four, they're not going to be good at anything. But you can kind of tell if they can throw a ball or kick a ball or run fast. And it's up to the, it's up to the father and mother to develop that, not a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me with my volleyball girls team, I'm kind of the same situation you were, Harry. My daughter wants to play volleyball. The volleyball coach for our school, you know, her daughter matriculated to middle school last year, so it's on me now. And my emphasis to the girls has always been, I really want you to enjoy yourselves in the moment. It, you know, enjoy the thrill of the fight when you're in the, when you're playing the game. Because I did a lot of child athletics. And I'm lucky because our parents aren't crazy like that. We're the ones who are cheering them on in the most positive fashion and nobody's getting upset. The only time I yell at my girls is when they are negative towards themselves or towards each other because I, I refuse to have that. Mm -hmm. I will not have them hurting each other on the team and saying, you missed that point. You should have gotten that, et cetera, et cetera. And it's actually their development last season was amazing. Like my daughter couldn't even get it over the net when we started. And now she's, you know, flipping around and doing backhanded shots, you know, across the net. So... That's really positive. Kids develop fast if they're uh, if you practice with them or if yeah. they if they go to practice. Mm -hmm. um, what should a parent know about starting kids in sports? It, it, which which they know that you know it probably takes money to begin. Yeah, with. yeah, and it, that's it, everything. To the child. Plays, it yeah. takes <laughs> more money than you can imagine <laughs> if they're going to go to club sports and travel and yeah. If it's almost like the better they are, the more expensive they're going to be. Um, <laughs> also, though, one thing I noticed about when my kids were in soccer was that there were things they couldn't do because a coach said, you're not going to do that. You're going to go to bed at 9 o'clock. And so I could tell my kids, you know, you need to be in bed at 9 o'clock, and they would just ignore me. But a coach tells them that they're in bed at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, and that's pretty awesome. And the other thing was that even when my son was like 4 years old, 5 years old, he made a team called the Hornets. And the coach was from SMU. Mm -hmm. It was a, um, a real famous coach at SMU. And the Hornets philosophy, they told the parents, was kids carry their own bag. So moms are used to care, you know, packing the soccer bag and lugging it. And this four-year-old team, the coach wouldn't have it. Kids carried their own bag. Good. And if they forgot their bag, they weren't going to play. If, yeah. they, if they forgot their shoes, they weren't going to play. Mm -hmm. And it was – starting to learn life lessons at the age of four you got to be responsible right exactly. away so let that kind of leads into Corey. you made it all the way to the nfl mm -hmm. and so you kind of lived the dream that so many people will never get to live outside of that outside of the fact that you made it through that narrow funnel from high school to college to pro what are the the different obviously positive characteristic traits that football gave you starting way back when on your first time on the field what was important to that is still important to you now I tell you what they, for me, they taught you how to have someone's back mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of what I speak on a lot now is the power of the huddle and everything involved that and what I've gotten from that. So, you know, when I was growing up through that, my folks were going through a divorce and it was kind of a tough time for my brothers and I, and so I latched on to anything a coach <laughs> or a teacher would say. So that opinion of me almost to a fault was, was it. It was like God to me at the time, right? Yeah, and so, so you were you wanted your coach's approval. Oh my gosh, big time! So it meant it meant that much to you. Where okay, I'll do what he says. If yeah, it's, he 
Rutabaga. I'll eat. I'll eat that. Whatever he says, but it'll make me. What's <laughs> well, a rutabaga? Rutabaga. <laughs> well, hey, it's a great athletic food, kind of. I'm pretty sure from Corey's Montana. not eating it. <laughs> well, it's <Power> a <laughs> veggie. <laughs> rutabaga. I didn't eat beets. Look, I grew up on like Doritos and milk, and my dad ate a lot of steak. Well, okay, I was a chubby kid. 250 okay. pounds now. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to get <laughs> to okay, right now. Just a little more. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm more like 280, 90 right now. But, uh, but, the, but you, than. well, you, you, there's kind of like an underlying, uh, 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 I don't know if you want to call it a value, but kind of a, uh, a way to get kids to do things. And a lot of conversations I have right now are my kid, you know, he's a natural athlete and he's got a scholarship. I had this with one of my buddies the other day, this kid at my, you know, my son's, Team at a school has a scholarship to play football, but now he doesn't want to play football. There's underlying factors we can use as motivators to use uh, as as tools to get to do something. So you talk about the coach, who you're not able to tell him to get in bed by nine, but the coach is able to because they invest so much into that, and they, he realized, like, okay, that's a big voice in my life, and how can I use that to kind of help direct them in a proper manner? And he was able to do that. So that's one reason I like the sports is it takes gives us some structure, gives us some positive voices in our life, but it also takes away from a lot of opportunity in garbage places. That is absolutely true. We knew that, that with, with, with sports and all the drive, I mean, if you're going to get your kid in sports, get a Suburban. <laughs> Which know, we had one, get, it, done. Way. get a Suburban, <laughs> you know, have a can to pee in if, uh, if you're out there. In, no. No? <laughs> well, Soldiers. when you're way out in Arlington <laughs> and you have three games out there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the folders get a, get a get a cooler with food you know and cooler with food nice to have a tv in the suburban too uh but now you're talking about a van a van that's what you're yeah. talking about yeah. now or no uh, i'm old. that's aging myself a little bit but we're still millennials there's right. there's there's some expenses involved uh but one of the things that that team sports teach you of course is, is like you said the value of a teammate mm -hmm. the value of someone having your back you having someone's back yeah you my son one of my sons was goalie and mm -hmm. I mean, he was their back, but whenever he was out of goal and, and, and the ball was flying into the goal, some defensive guy would step in. I mean, that was just, it was just, the teamwork lesson was, was awesome. And, and it's something that you can carry into adulthood that uh, life in a solo sport. Right. Um, so you've got, you've got discipline, that's, that's a cool thing of sports. You've got learning teamwork, that's a cool thing. And you've got, um, um, you have to be independent. I mean, you cannot be a wallflower and do sports. You're going to have to go out there and make some decisions. You have to. You have to. Sometimes you're going to be wrong. Yeah. Sometimes you know that poor guy with <laughs> with <laughs> last night in the Vikings versus the Saints. That guy that played for the Saints that let that 60-yard touchdown last play go. Oh. oh yeah. Oh, I'm sure his mother was on her knees crying. <laughs> this is not what I gave up my life for. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah, that's hard. I mean, it's, well, you talk about the one on ones. Good. We, we were just talking about that with Kathleen. Was uh, Parcells had said in a team meeting one time, if you're not gonna, if you can't win the one on one, you're not gonna win the overall goal. Right. You're not gonna win the game, and it, it plays on. And really, it, it, it's not to put you on an island, but it's to emphasize the importance of your job. And so you talk about the same thing. You learn that in sports. I know that my one-on-one -on -one as an offensive lineman to block this D-tackle is so important that if I don't make it happen, the quarterback can't get the ball off to the receiver. We can't score. We will not win. That's right. it. So the same thing where I take it to you, right? If we, you and I cannot work together on a certain subject, if our overall goal is not going to happen. Right. And so we have to work together. That's the power of, of the team sports is like we have to make this work. Even if we disagree – we got to do something like because i respect you too much not to get along and you can carry that into into the adult world i mean uh an office is a team mm -hmm. you know a business is a team you're if, if you rise to be ceo you have a team of managers that uh, executives that you depend on so uh i do have to interrupt mm. that thought since we kind of pulled that together we do have a question from facebook live Corey, how do you feel about everybody getting a participation trophy? I hate it. Every ounce of me hates participation trophies. I hate trophies. him, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, drives me it's, crazy. It's, it's, it's stop it with that. Yeah. Nobody gets a participation trophy when you go out in the workplace. No. You get fired. Legit. I've been fired from football teams. Right. Coaches get – Hall of Fame coaches have been fired. All right? You're not preparing them from any, for anything – bad in the world that's going to happen you're 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 creating 
a, a mountain of withdrawal is what you're going to create in them. So you need to prep them for that. Say, hey, you lost. Okay, what happened? You know, how did you lose? What did they do well? What did you do? What could we work on to make it better for next time? And you're taking away the growing part of it. And what's so right about that is a lot of parents will go, you were better. <laughs> I know you yeah. didn't make, but you were better. Yes. You didn't make the team. Or you yes. didn't make, and no, don't Stop you're not it. better. You lost. We Just <laughs> deal with losing. Loser, <laughs> loser. You don't have to yell that. <laughs> Let's not scream at the children. I mean, come on. You're a loser. <laughs> you're a loser. <laughs> you're you ruining my game. I will admit that my daughter's uh, volleyball team all got little volleyball medals, um, even though I grew up. Like when we did gymnastics awards, I was in gymnastics 20 hours a week for seven years. Um, it was my life. And when we did the awards dinner at the end of the year, nobody got participation trophies. And Good. so the year that I got most improved and hardest worker, I really earned that. Mm -hmm. I kicked everybody's butt, all 50 girls on the team to earn that trophy. But now I'm handing out participation trophies. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's not everyone's going to make the team. I mean, one of the, th one of the things I wanted most to do was letter in football. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I couldn't get the playing time. I was just not that good. You're not the same size as Corey? Um, well, <laughs> Corey's size killed me. <laughs> well, and, and look at how many but, attitudes we have coming in, okay, into workplaces. And I've, and I've dealt with plenty of this already. Is like, I hate my job. I hate my boss. He doesn't get me. And none of these different things. And okay, some of that might be legitimate qualms, right? But you, these attitudes that come in are like, hold up, let's stop this. So, you know, successful people don't think like that. Mm -hmm. Like we can't work together. We're just going to end the relationship. They don't think like that. They think around and outside the box. How can I make this work in a sense? This, there, there is a solution. It's just finding it. Right. Right. So it's, uh, it's not this, I hate my boss. Okay. Now we're asking, let's ask questions to dive into this a whole lot. Why do I hate my boss? Why do I not like this? Why do, why do I feel like he doesn't like me? Or why am I not succeeding in the job? Let's identify those factors. Because when we can bring those to light, all of a sudden our perspective changes. And now I can speak to you on a whole, it's like the texting. I hate the texting. The texting is efficient. Okay, that's great. But I, but I had this with my wife and anybody else and my buddies. I'm like, stop texting. Like, I don't think he likes me. Call him. Right, right. <laughs> Call him. Call him. Yeah. That, that, that invention was like 100 years old now, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> Texting's relatively new compared to actually speaking on the phone. I mean, this camera, you know, makes phone calls, but it's better to, uh, <laughs> to uh, call. The other thing sports do is, and you've alluded to this, is discipline. Yes. I mean, you have to have discipline to succeed in sports. And back to this point, you can have all the discipline in the world. And you can try as hard as you want. You can show it every practice, and you still may fail. Mm. And that's a that's a hard lesson, but it's a good lesson, because if parents today are too scared of their kids failing. Like I said, I didn't let her. I I lived, went on to succeed in other things. Yes. But uh, right. uh, but how would you would you might not have gone on to those other things if you let that one failure right right bog you down. stop me down and, yes. and not be able to do anything. Well, and the reality of life is that most kids who play sports I as children are not going to go on. So I have some statistics here that is put out by the NCAA. Ruin every parent's dream of a college scholarship. Listen, Ruin it. My Ruin daughter, it. My daughter is them. going to win an Olympic medal at the track and field. Mm -hmm, we'll happen. be watching. Mm -hmm, Rush yeah, it. About 15 years. Any anyway, rate, um, so football, you have uh, 1 million high school participants, but only 2.6% of them go to a Division One football school. And then from there, only 1.9% of those students in college go on to play pro ball. So the reality is, is any parent, myself included, that really has that dream and thinks that that's actually going to come true, it's very unrealistic. Now, even though I think it's going to happen, it's not going to happen. And so, Corey, what you're saying is there are so many other aspects of what you learned in middle and high school football that if you had not gone on, would still be with you today. Is that correct? 100%. Yeah. That's the, those coaches that spoke into me and the hard work. I mean, we had to come to practice every day. I had to show up every day. I never missed. Mm -hmm. We didn't go on vacations. We had some of those kids that we got like as winter break. So I have to miss all of wrestling practice that week. So we had some of those. But I ne we never, that was a good thing about my parents. They were committed. They were hardworking like crazy. They went to work every single day. So I followed in that steps just because that's what they were. So I went to work every single day, and I might have been a, a chubby kid growing up, but I showed up. Yeah. And I just showed up. And just by you showing up, you're naturally going to have a progression that other people will not have at all. You know, showing up is like 90% of the battle. Showing up to class, mm -hmm. <laughs> showing up right. in college, showing up for practice, showing up for your job, you know, showing up in a relationship, 
that's that's showing up is the big deal. As a parent, it is the most important thing is to show up. Like you were saying earlier in the podcast about actually taking time to be with your kid. My daughter is now a excellent bike rider. So I will, and I'm training for a half marathon, so I will run and she will ride the bike with me. And there's no goal other than being together and doing physical activity together. You know, I mean, for her, there's no goal. Right. She's and, just having a good time. And I don't want parents to think, well, if my kid isn't good enough for organized sports for club sports then there's no point in him even throwing a baseball around that's just not what we're saying Mm -hmm. i mean we're saying the exact opposite it's much better much healthier for you and your kids to go play than than get on a sports team i mean if if you're good enough to be on a sports team and you've got the financial resources fantastic Mm -hmm. but every parent should be outside playing with their kids i mean that's that's where a love of sports is developed there is some you know concern now but though but like my son played both football and soccer and the soccer coach said you got to quit you got to quit football and the football coach called me up and railed me out about it but I said, it's not, he's in ninth grade that's his decision um there is a kind of a 10 to specialization um probably starts really early now seventh yeah. eighth grade well mm-hmm. um, little girls at four or five years old i was in gymnastics and yeah. at that point you have to make a strong commitment so that can happen very very young and i mm-hmm. see that at my daughter's old dance school parents who are like forcing their four-year-olds yeah. to do three different dance classes so the only the only neg to that is that it can quit being fun yes and the kids can rebel and or not rebel just say i'm done my oldest son um was getting letters from coaches his junior year and i was like all excited and he said i'm done dad (laughs) no we're not done we're not done we're just getting started look at this coach from nyu he wants to talk to you i'm done and did he was he done at that point? he was done he was done with uh club sports he played high school soccer but he was done with with he was done wow Hmm. so uh uh, then he he went back to uh when he went to tcu he walked on to the soccer team and then after a week of throwing up realized remembered why he was done yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Those are the best practices. <laughs> yes. I really am done now. Uh, you got to figure out what you don't want to do also. Well, you, actually, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like parents don't push them into don't push them into specialization just because a coach wants them not to play this or not to play that. It's really the kid's decision. But uh, uh, understand that, that there are kids who are specializing in as, as young as eighth grade. Mm-hmm. And they will be naturally better if that's what they're focused on. I, I wouldn't do that at all. I mean, now, okay, we can talk about two ends of the spectrum. We talk about gymnastics where there is an age period of specialization there that you're going to miss a window if oh, yeah. you do not do it. True. Okay? And we missed that on purpose with my daughter. Right. But um, there's, so, there's some balancing moments, I think, in those, right, where you want to specialize in the sport and that's fantastic and you're teaching some fantastic things. You know, but to, to what detriment at the same time? I, on the opposite end where we're talking about development sports where you have to age you have to mature talking about football basketball even though you can get you know it's only one year in college you have to be now to go to the nba but uh, some of those more where you have to be matured to go to the next level uh nick saban came out with a great study out of his own scholarship athletes and he, i think he found that uh, multi-sport athletes coming out of high school were four times more likely to get a, a college scholarship at his school than awesome. any other than specialized really yes take note of that that's a great statistic yeah it's fantastic the other thing that can really bother parents of, of children in sports is you want to have a sixth grade or seventh grade kid who's really developed mm. i mean who's insanely developed for with his, a giant beard yeah, or something with, exactly <laughs> there was a there was a guy named um charles I think it's been long enough, who like dominated 7th, 8th, and ninth grade club soccer. Absolutely dominated. He looked like a man out there. And we were all going, oh, my God, we're playing Charles. It's horrible. Um, just call him Chuck. Just Chuck. But it, well, by 10th grade, grade, he became Chuck because there everybody else caught up with him. <laughs> so, you know, don't get discouraged because kids are, are more developed than you. And don't think, once again, that you're going to get the college scholarship prize because your kid is so developed in 7th grade. Everybody catches up mm-hmm. by 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 your senior year. Everyone is the same, yeah, e- except for skill. So, Corey, what are you and your wife? Your daughter is around three, yes. Yes. What are you and your wife discussing as far as what you see for the next steps for her? Because obviously, you're athletic. It's 
clear i mean it's your career mm-hmm. what are you going to do with your baby girl uh next do you have any plans <laughs> Well, as far as organized stuff, we want to get her into gymnastics. Yeah. We need to get her. Gymnastics is so great. You start learning to use your body in such a functional format that it just it projects to every other avenue that they want to go there. Mm-hmm. It's so fantastic in that sense. So you know, they can go to any sport and know how to use their body way better than just coming in cold. Absolute great so, body control yes. instruction. For so sure. you, you can take a gymnast and put them on a soccer field, and they will have way better body presence than someone who's just coming in cold or just, you know. Yeah, starting. Been starting. Just starting. But, uh, but yeah. Well, so I can't believe we're almost out of time. This it's is, crazy. This is, this we could do like, this. This could be three or four this episodes. This conversation episodes. is inquisitive. Time flies. <laughs> inquisitive. So uh, let's wrap it up. Let's, let's, so let's list five things that, that that organized sports will do for you with the caveat that the most important thing you can do is go out and play with your child. Yes. That is the single most important thing you can do for their development, for their happiness, for your happiness, for family togetherness, for the whole thing. You want to be playing with your kids. But if you don't, but the organized sports, we can say teaches them discipline. So they, they have to be disciplined to, to play and to go to bed and to eat right and, mm-hmm. and uh, go to bed when you're told to. You have to be uh, we have teamwork. It teaches you. We even gotten into like it teaches you honor in terms of like golfers. You know, I'm, I missed that shot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I play scrambles all the time. People cheat constantly. I know. <laughs> I know. Most sports teach I you never honor. win. <laughs> it gets you outside. It develops you. Yeah, it teaches you independence. Gives you fearlessness. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it's if your if your child wants to do it, it's a great thing. And as a parent, just be careful that you think you're sitting on a, on a college, college product, prodigy, unless they look like him, <laughs> the odds are probably not. Odds are probably not. But I know some dudes that are, look like him and couldn't catch anything for their life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or run well, for that's their so, life. That's me like half the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say, I love the name of the podcast, Fearless. Yeah. Because, and what we get from sports is a lot of fearless. Because if, we, if I can't, I, I would have never taken this shot to talk to my coach to say I'm the guy to start. Or I, w- I might not have been the guy to propose to my wife. Come right. on. You think about situations like that in life. Like, we Come on, brother, step up for yourself. Right. Right? Step up for you. And then how can you how can you ask him to step up in that scenario or eventually for his family in a time of desperate need? Right? You talk about some people facing divorces, some people some people with really family like health issues where they have to make decisions, hard decisions. How can we be leaders in that if we don't have any sort of that fearless mindset? Absolutely. I think because you gotta have it. So I love it. I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, Right Sorry. Out of time. Out right of time. time. And so Corey oh. has picked the book sponsor today. The book sponsor is from Father to Daughter, written by Harry H. Harrison Jr., brilliant writer and brilliant Gosh, parent sounds expert. Like a heck of so a what's your like a nice ex- guy? <laughs> what's your excerpt, Corey? Which excerpt speaks to you as a father who has a daughter? So this is fantastic because it was the first page I flipped to, but it was get to know all her friends, father to daughter, get to know all her friends. Middle school marks the zenith of peer influence. Absolute zenith. 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 Scary. I, I use that day. word. That's the word of the day. Okay. I want to thank my special guest, Corey Proctor, for showing up. This is wonderful. Thanks so much for coming. I want to thank Catherine Deneu. I, mean, I, I haven't even <laughs> mentioned I have. Zach. I know. All the way over here. All the way over here. <laughs> so not said away. a word, which Just, is unusual. I, you know, I've tried. I really did. If you listen, there's a couple times in there where I tried <laughs> to jump in. <laughs> couldn't, <laughs> couldn't do it. Word in edgewise, not for me. Okay. So. I uh, love you. Real I'm quick. Sorry. Oh, 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 Corey, where can people reach you? Yeah. Learn about oh. you? Go check me out. You can check me Twitter and Instagram at Corey Proctor. Go to my uh, official Facebook at Corey Proctor Official and check out my brand new website. Super excited about it, CoreyProctor.com. And it just uh, look for opportunities to project my own message out there about being a warrior for your family. And, and all, a lot of the stuff we talked about today, Super Jack. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. CoreyProctor.com. Okay, guys, thank you so much. We'll be with you next week. And out.
Harris Parenting is a production of the Real News Communications Network in collaboration with Harry H. Harrison, Jr. This episode was recorded and edited by Matt Stoker and myself, Zach Lewis. Production music courtesy of the Audio Jungle Music Library. To find out more about Harry and his work or to purchase one of his books, visit www.fearlessparenting.com. destination for premium talk radio.